I love your story because it all started out flirting in a bar, basically. I was in a bar in the Lower East Side with my best friend, and uh, we just started talking to these two girls. They happened to be Brazilian, and they mentioned that the thing they missed most about Brazil was agua de coco, which is coconut water. We liked the idea. He actually moved to Brazil a couple weeks later to be with the girl. Um, that was not fast. for the coconut water. <laughs> yeah, he moves fast. I went down to visit, and they were right. I mean, coconut water at the time was everywhere in Brazil. We just saw a business opportunity and decided to start a business. No real business plan, no thought about what type of business do we want to start? Do we want to be in the beverage business? It's and it's been an amazing 12 year journey so far ever since. But you didn't know anything about this stuff. I didn't know anything about anything, really. I just kind of felt like it was a business opportunity. I figured, okay, if I need to get on shelves, I need to figure out how to get distribution. And then I made my own way of selling it, right? So at the time, rollerblades were still kind of cool. I strapped on my rollerblades and I realized I could hit 60 stores in New York City in a day as compared to like 12 if I was walking. Cheap labor. Cheap labor, yeah, me and my rollerblades. What's the thing about coconut water? Why is it taking off? Consumers like instant gratification. That's why energy drinks do so well. When you drink an energy drink, when you're tired, you wake up. When you drink a coconut water, when you're really thirsty, coconut water works and it works quickly at hydrating the body. Do you worry about it being a fad? Coconut water has been a massive category in the entire tropical world for generations. Time was, if you wanted to sip fresh coconut water, well, you had to become pretty handy with the machete. All we've done is bring it to North America and bring it to Europe and bring it to places where it didn't exist before. I'm not hauling 60 coconuts through TSA. Let Vita Coco do the heavy lifting. When we started this business, we were selling in 30 blocks in New York City. Today we're selling in 30 countries around the world. We're running eight manufacturing facilities in 10 different countries. Madonna and Rihanna, they now are investors in your company. Yep. How did that come to be? I met Madonna's manager, Guy Osiri, uh, for coffee through an introduction through somebody else. And he suggested that we hire Madonna to be the face of Vita Coco. And I'm like, first of all, I can't afford Madonna. Second of all, even if I did pay her something, I have no advertising budget, so what am I gonna do with her? And I suggested, why don't you guys invest in the business? And that's exactly what happened. We sold part of the business to Madonna. She actually brought in Matthew McConaughey, Anthony Kiedis, Demi Moore at the time. They all invested, it was amazing. They took a stake of the business and then went and worked for us by actually talking about the brand on stage, in the gym, in interviews, whatever they were doing, and really helped drive the popularity of the business. You had to feel like it was a breakthrough. I didn't realize how big at the time, but realized it quite quickly the day we announced it and just the media attention was tremendous. When I first heard about your story, it was kind of like, oh, he had a contact, he knew the right yeah. people, so it was easy. I don't come from that industry. Um, I don't have those type of connections. The key was the product. If it was me introduced to Madonna with some other product and some other brand, wouldn't have been so successful. You're now getting into coconut oil as yeah. a product. Yeah. Why not just stick to coconut water? We're cracking two million coconuts a day. And the beauty of the coconut is you can use every little piece of the coconut. Why not create other products within our own brand that we can use that same coconut for? Second thing is, We've built a brand that people love. We've spent 12 years building a business, and I think our consumers give us the license to play in all things coconut. What's been the hardest lesson to learn along the way? Always stick with your gut instinct. You know, at one point I didn't. I strayed when somebody, everybody was telling us, your packaging early days, your packaging is too ethnic, it's too kitschy. So we hired this designer to design a new packaging. It was really sleek and really cool. It went on the shelf, and literally I saw consumers looking at it differently. Within three months, we switched it back to the original design, and then from that point forward, I said, we stick with what we've got because it's working, why change it? My father was an entrepreneur. I was starting businesses with my dad when I was nine years old. I think that is where I learned to just be resilient. In starting all of those businesses with your father, you realize they're not all gonna be successes. Right, totally. When you're starting a business, you might not know everything, but you can always figure it out. There's always a way to figure it out. It's just the way it works. And, and uh, you've gotta keep on, keep on going.